Nabil Al Alawi is with me right now. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Al Mansouri Specialized Engineering. Nabil, it's great to see you again, Thank and you. a big congratulations for being in the finalists Thank you. Um, and last night in the awards. You've Thank done a tremendous you. job over the years. So tell us, how good a year has it been for you? Well, if it gets better than this, I wouldn't know what to do. It's a very, very good year, and the future looks much, much better. We're also excited. We just don't know how to organize ourselves to meet the challenges, but we're going to try. Well, isn't that a great complaint to have in many ways? Again, the theme of this conference too, challenges and opportunities. And I think if anybody can handle it, it's probably a man like yourself. Give us a feel for the challenges and how you turn them into opportunities. The talking challenges from now for, be, for the next 30 years. Hopefully, God willing, will give me good health, will be here for the next 30 years. What it will be? It's everybody's guest, but only one thing I can know. The quality of the service that we, will, we have been doing, we're going to continue doing it, and we're going to do better in it, and we're going to offer better services to meet the challenges and the expectation of our clients. Now, you're kept very busy, of course, in this region, but you're also with that outside this region, too. I mean, this is a company that's really grown into an international company over the years. Just give me a feel for where you're focusing the business on. Well, the world is an oyster, but... For us to offer this quality service that we are and to give what we want to do, we want to still concentrate in the region because the region holds most of the reserves of the world and most of the big future business is going to be here. So why go outside when we can concentrate where the real measures and the real expansion is going to be here in the region? Now, of course, you've, technology is driving this industry too, and you've been a very much a champion of technology. How has that changed over the years for you? And keeping up with technology is obviously a key initiative for everybody. It's, it's a very big challenge because, uh, as you know, our company, we don't have our own R&D. So we have to go and outsource many of these things. A lot of times they are proprietary items. But at the end of the day, what the client is looking for is high integrity of safety, and good qualified people with the proper process and systems. And that is what we want to deliver and concentrate. Of course, health and safety is one key, number one on your agenda as well. And you've also been a great proponent of safety, of course, is number one. But you've also added a little component to it on the, to take the health side of health and safety a little more serious. Absolutely. How can you do anything in life without being healthy? I mean, get a guy at 20 years old joining me healthy I expect if he stays with me another 20 years and he becomes 40 years old, I expect him to have the same waistline and healthy. That a healthy man is a successful man and in return, me as the owner of the company having a healthy workforce, it's a win-win all the way. Um, we liked what you did. We've seen some of your initiative. We've seen your no sugar initiative. We've seen a lot of this. And again, the concept of health and safety. Do you, do you think sometimes that maybe the industry doesn't pay enough attention to both sides? It's health and safety because being healthy makes sure you're probably more alert and safer. So maybe tell us how important it is to combine both of them and to, to focus on both. Absolutely. I think the industry, when they say health, safety and environment, they concentrate on safety and environment so much. But the main thing behind all of safety, behind all of environment, is a healthy workforce. Let's concentrate and spend more money in building a healthy workforce. Now we had the real pleasure of being with young Addie Peck and bringing some of the, the young uh, children, well they're hardly children now, they're growing up, the young teenagers and hopefully the new leaders of the future, out to Al Mansouri. Your people were very gracious, they took a lot of time. How important is it that you engage with a younger community like that with the hope of getting them interested in the business early? Yeah. I think the, uh, the more they get exposed to what we do, the more they get exposed to see the real, what the oil field service is all about, I think the more they're going to get encouraged to come and join us. But most important thing, I think we and the government must work hand in hand together to encourage the people that the private sector is as good as the public sector. And do you, this initiative, Young Adipec, would you support this initiative throughout the year? Many of the young guys were actually saying that, that it's wonderful to come in once a year and see this, but they were actually also saying that it would be nice to perhaps maybe see something throughout the year. Yeah. Well, t t today we'll probably be signing a, a memorandum of understanding with ADNOC to take a group to start with of young graduates, even high school kids, and bring them on a two-year, three-year program where we build them up to be good citizens of the oil and gas. 
Now, it's great to see you here this year. You've always got a wonderful stand. It's always, it's got a beautiful traditional feel to it, which I know is important for you as well. Um, but just tell me a little bit about this year at um, Adipec 2014. It's an anniversary year, and just tell me how the business has been. Like I started this uh, conversation, if it gets better than this, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Super, we'll leave it there. Good luck and thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting me.